Rugged Racing show us your tips. Now we weren't sacked for potting Nature's Trip last week. Uh, we're back to preview day two of the championships. Uh, unfortunately, a combination of uh, some illness and uh, the Easter sales and some travel issues meant we won't have to do a midweek show, but we're back to do to look at day two of hopefully a wet championships. Beaver, how are you travelling up there? Pretty good, mate. Uh, on my way to Queensland, actually. Um, hopefully get away with from the shitty Sydney weather, mate, and up to some sun on the Gold Coast. So just stopping over where I, in Kempsey at the moment uh, to do the show and then uh, be heading off. Fingers crossed it stays uh, half decent up there, but uh, we may as well get into it. Uh, just quickly, though, yeah, egg on our face for doubting the grand finalist uh, nature strip, as I mentioned. Uh, probably sanity prevailed uh, thanks to a few comments and also common sense. I did throw it into quality at the last minute and didn't help me because the the last leg, but um, yeah. grand final training is outstanding, to be about. honest. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, outstanding. I'm, I do, I do question a, a little bit the ride on Eduardo. I don't um, quite understand why it let um, Nature Strip just go past it and control the race. Um, we know Nature Strip is most vulnerable when it's taken on and a bit of pressure, uh, and they let it have the run, and it just was way too good. and. Um, you know, they showed that they were still two, the two class horses and horses like Shelby just uh, back to back to normal. Yeah, well, we've got, uh, and the rest of the day was actually pretty pretty good racing by and large, on a, despite the wet track. Oh, it was a great day racing. The top two, um, outstanding, just showed quality horse, probably didn't handle the track, but just the fight at the end um, was outstanding and certainly a horse on the way up, uh, super impressed with it. And Fireburn was... Uh, Quality coming through the inside there looked like it might have been for a strider to um, under a bit of pressure and the other thing had it but so uh, once it let down uh, very good horse that most outstanding horses and uh, we might see him in a cox plate next year so that's exciting uh, but we get to round week for day two of the championships where it is wet the track was underwater yesterday so you know I'm not holding my breath this meeting goes ahead but we'll have a look at it anyway and see where it all ends up they think they they're up they are optimistic that uh, it could dry out a little bit today and be okay by tomorrow, but it's going to be wet. It's going to be last man standing. The rail is in the four-metre mark, and we're going to kick off with the two-year-olds over the Fern Hill Mile. How are you starting today, Beaver? Yeah, look, I've, I've stuck with the favourite, Williamsburg. It was very good last start. Um, the, two, the top two in the market looked to have it between, and we know they handle the heavy going. Uh, Williamsburg, for me, uh, probably 260 is a little bit skinny. Um I'd like around the three dollar mark, but uh, yeah, it looks hard to beat. Yeah, yeah, that that was the a bottomless track at Rose Hill that they gapped the rest. It looks the obvious. If you're going to take the narrative though that uh, that all those horses that came through that race might be gutted from it, the fresh blood here is Russian Roni, who run who won well over mm -hmm. the twelve hundred uh, at Newcastle. Comes here avoiding that race, admittedly twelve hundred to a mile, but may lead and may give all of these something to chase if we look outside the box. But, uh, yeah, Williamsburg did, as I said, the, the Cornell from the lead-up does look obvious. Yeah, step up from 1,200 to 1,600 yeah, in the heavy. Yeah, if there was, I mean, I know it's something gay can do. If there was one, a run in between, I might have been more keener there. 1,400 metres, though, is race two, the South Pacific, uh, for the three-year-olds this time, where uh, it looks pretty obvious now, doesn't it? Lock Eagle coming here. As one both starts on the wet, this preparation beat a horse called Straight Aaron last start, who won by a space a week ago. Uh, all looks set up pretty nicely here, apart from losing Hugh Bowman. The rest is all look good to go in this field. Uh, I want to make a case, though, for as a danger for Zethus, who's double figures, has had a, some time between runs, sat outside lead in CS Hayes last time and held an OK before. That was a nice resumption chasing generation. Uh, and Nash goes on, I know it's up in weights on heavy, but uh, might run well at, uh, you might get 20 to 1 here and a little bit of a side, but Lock Eagle, very hard to beat, Beaver. Yeah, look, hard to go past, good horse, probably one of the better bets on the day, should handle the track. Um, killed Street Aaron and Street Aaron came out and won well uh, last start. Uh, conditions will suit and yeah, plenty of potential here with this horse. Race three is another 1,400 metre contest at the Provincial Finals Championship. What are you doing here? Yeah, a tricky little affair here, but um, I've settled on great news. Um, 
think it can run well in this race. I think it's drawn well out in the 12. Uh, we know it'll go back. Um, I'm hoping they can run on down the middle of the track in, at Randwick in this heavy going. Uh, being out wide is probably going to be the place to be. Has a good finish, has good form on the uh, heavy tracks, uh, three from three placings. Um, never been out of the, the placings second up and never been out of the placings at this distance. So um, a lot a lot going for great news. I think it can run well. And price you're getting four dollars fifty, yeah. Uh, I was I, I can understand why never talks favourite, but it was posted that because of the heavy track. Some forgotten horses here. Rustic Steel's coming through some proper metro stuff leading to this. Will run well and Mayrose through the same race is twenty it will, it will be twenty to one tomorrow outside gate and down in weights will be hard to beat as well. Uh, and Grand Remore, nice enough resumption there. Uh, up at, was it Newcastle? Yeah, Newcastle run. And again, double figures might be worth an each way play, uh, but uh, a good little race, race three. Race four is a Percy Sykes, a 1200 meter two-year-old group two for the Phillies. What have you done here, Beaver? Yeah, this one's a bit of a lottery for me. Um, all of these have some decent form and they all have uh, shown a little bit in the heavy going as well. Um, so really, really hard to get a line on these. I, I settled on Magic Carpet mm -hmm. um, around the $10 mark. It was pretty good behind She's Extreme um, who come out and cranked that form last week uh, uh, behind Fireburn. Uh, it ran, it sort of stuck on pretty well there. It was in the heavy going. It was a group three race. Um, drawn seven here. I think that's that's a suitable um, draw. So I think it's hard to beat. And one of probably the other one I'd chop out on is Willinga Beast. I thought it was very good at its first start. Um, uh, albeit it was a maiden at Canterbury. One pretty easy there. Finished off well. And again, that was a heavy track. 1,200 could suit. But they were the two that I kind of went for. But many chances in this. Yeah, I think we probably both agree the favourite's too short because I went right away from it as well. I looked at the two you said and the other two, but the other two I'll throw in. North Star Lass, again, coming from a heavy midweek win at Warwick Farm. Got up the fence and was, and was pretty good there. We roll forward under Tim Clark. That's always going to give you a side on a track like this. And very interested to see She's a Belter come here from the West. Uh, some impressive runs over there. Uh, Midland Gates gets the outside and has a big finish shot if it handles the wet. Uh, which we don't know yet out of cold standard. Uh, handles are wet. It will be very hard to beat. So we can go a bit wider, I think, and um, I'm, I'm fairly confident you might get a result in this race doing so. Race five is the, for the boys, the Arrowfield Sprint. Oh, just for the three-year-olds, in fact, over the 1,200 metres, another group two. A cracking race, Beaver. What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, cracking race here. Three that are really, really... Um close together in the market. And then outside of that, um, some really good value. Um, I've gone for Mazu. Uh, its form is faultless, uh, this preparation in. Again, track will suit, gate eight. I think it can get the right run here, just off the pace, uh, probably sitting behind in the Congo. Um, and then probably just try and wear it down at the end. Uh, be a really good finish, I think, this one. I mean, in the Congo is going well. I uh, don't know if it's, the heavy tracks going to suit it or not as much as maybe Mazu. Paul Leal was good last start, but uh, how much that took out of it, I don't know. I'd just prefer a fresher Mazu. Um, and then again, one of my horses down here, Marine One, around the $20. Um, I think it can run really well. Uh, it's flying. Um, heavy track, uh, not so sure of. It hasn't really been tested in the heavy or the soft, so that's that'll, that'll be a bit of a... A question mark there, but I'm going Mazu with uh, Marine One as my value. Well, yeah, one of the races of the day. There's some, some good ones to come, but uh, a great contest here. Look, I looked at the top, the two top ones. It was hard for me to split though. In the Congo, resumed quite well in the Galaxy, which we haven't seen a lot come out of. A bar Paul Ile, who's had a run since, ran well chasing the two best sprinters in Australia, and uh, gets a seven-day backup. So I've gone Paul Ile on top of in the Congo. Scared of Marine One, as you said, and, and Mazu, well, hasn't been beaten since it's been gelded, so don't know, but just I was leaning to what I perceived to be the two slightly better horses up the top there. Race six is the first of the group ones, the 2,400-metre Australian Oaks for the girls, and 
Well, I was every way I looked at this to try and be clever. I then looked at the market and uh, it was in market order. So I don't have a lot to add here. Uh, I'm going to probably put Honey Creeper on top just because we it's on the backup. We know it can run the trip, handles the wet okay, and um, was pretty good. Uh, was it ten days ago at Newcastle? But uh, yeah, there's there's this could could be a lottery or it could be obvious, and I'm not quite sure yet. Um, so Honey Creeper on top from uh, Pink Ivory, and then the the two favourites. What have you done here? Yeah, look, another good race, tricky race, a couple, a lot of up-and-comers here, but again, you've got the three or four in the market that look to hold it between them. I've gone for Gypsy Goddess. Uh, I just really liked um, its run last start. It jumped up from the, yeah, first up it was over the 1600, won really well in Eagle Farm. They brought it here, I wasn't quite sure. Uh, Newcastle, I thought it finished off well enough back in a field that probably didn't really suit and I thought it finished off really nicely behind Fangirl. Um, I know it was about four lengths off, uh, Hinge too ran really well, but I just think this has really been set for this 2400 metres here and I think um, it can run awfully good here. Yeah, no, fair enough. The Quaddy starts with the 3200 metre Sydney Cup uh, where the wet track may have thrown up a few spanners here. What are, you, what are you doing here? Yeah, look, this is a, this is a really tricky race. Um, I, I'm i going to go Crystal Pegasus purely because I just it's just going so well. Um, and it's really hard to go. But I'm, the, the heavy track is a, probably a little bit of concern. But it has ran well on the soft before. Um, but it's flying. They took it down and have brought it back here. Um, I think it's super hard to beat. Uh, you've got to have surefire um, uh, in and around the, the mark. I think its last run was really good. Um, and Chalk Street, I haven't ruled it out as well. So they're sort of the three I've got it down to. I've got Crystal Pegasus on top, but the other two are huge dangers. Yeah, I, uh, you've taken the word out of mouth. It was, a, it was a good or even soft track I would be declaring Crystal Pegasus. Uh, very hard to beat here and if we take the narrative perhaps it hasn't missed any work which some of these horses might have maybe it is still set up well here uh, coming dry to wet probably isn't a bad thing so on top for me uh, from the wallet order you've mentioned Shaw Fryer goes in uh, no compromise goes in obviously Stockman chased Dewis last start uh, and we'll get to the quaddy later but uh, I think I'm happy to find out at the each way bet on Crystal Pegasus the well, the race of the carnival just about is a 2,000 metre Queen Elizabeth Stakes. Group one, what a cracking contest it is. All the stars have turned up for this. Heavy track does throw a bit of a spanner in. And uh, what does that then mean, Beaver? Well, what does it mean? It's really hard. I mean, as you say, um, Jewass is going like a bomb at the moment. Uh, it's really hard to go past. Um, You've got Very Elegant, who just loves this thing out of the ground. Animo is a quality horse. Zaki, not sure Zaki in the really heavy conditions um, yeah. is going to really be suited here. I mean, this is just an unbelievable race. Um, look, where, where do you land? I, I've come back to Very Elegant. I wanted to find a reason to go away from Very Elegant. Uh, now the track has got to where it's at and it's super heavy. I've landed back on Very Elegant. If it wasn't, I probably would have looked somewhere else um, and may have went for Juas or Saki. Um, but given the, the, the track conditions, I'm probably leaning slightly towards Very Elegant um, and Anima. Yeah, no, I probably egg on my face time again because this is the grand final has been all along. Uh, and does see very elegant peak here as nature strip did last time gets conditions to suit but i'm going animo uh, animo was great in the cox plate in the wet beat or did beat very elegant by who was unlucky in that race uh admittedly and went on to win the melbourne cup but did beat it last time uh hold it in by seven in the heavy a few weeks back in the rose hill guineas i think it's a star and i think it's back to its best and will be hard to beat from uh well, I think that's right. I think I think you're right that it is like it's definitely a star. Um, it did bowl in by seven lengths, but beat Converge, it beat nobody. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I, I I I am a bit. You know, the two thousand certainly suits, but I'm just not sh sure. This is a better quality field. 
Yep. Uh, yeah, you, if I'm playing very elegant, Montefilia has got to go in next and do it. So, but uh, I'll be going wide in the quaddy here because nothing would surprise me, bar probably Mount Popper. Great race. Yeah, cracking. Best race. best race I've seen in a long time. Probably since the Cox Plate last year. <laughs> so Better than that. Actually, it's better. It's better it than that. Better Anna, yeah, it's yeah really, like uh, very elegant. Animo, Zaki, Duas, Montefilia. Um, and then, you know, you've still got and, I'm Thunderstruck and Think It Over, who, who are no slouches. Who, who are chances too. Think It Over. Uh, Thunderstruck's yep. a chance here. Uh, the Queen of the Turf over the mile comes up next in the quaddy. What have you done, Beaver? Well, again, this is another very, very, very good race. Um, like, yeah, I love this race. Uh, it's a beauty. Uh, again, you've probably got seven or eight um, genuine chances here. Um, you're probably looking at the field again. Um, you've got to have Colette, Colette uh, right in it, uh, given that, uh, again, it loves the, the sting out of the ground. Yons is a bit untried um, in these type of conditions. I know it's had one out of one on the soft, but this is a bottomless heavy track um, and drawn the one gate. I probably can't take it, um, being in the one gate and being unsure on that. Fangirl's been tried twice on the heavy and hasn't uh, hasn't come up. Um, so that's a little bit of a worry for it. Um, I've settled on Lighthouse. I think Lighthouse can run really well. Um, I think it handles the conditions quite well. Um, it wasn't a bad run in the Doncaster, and they've backed it up here on the short turnaround. Um, I think middle of the track can suit. Um, I think it's it's a pretty good value in this race, and I think it's going to be super hard to beat. So I've got it on top uh, with Colette, um, and then so, sort of big question mark on yours. Yeah, well, uh, I, everywhere I looked, I sort of wanted to take on the two favourites, but... I've just defaulted back to the wide gates at Ramwick in these big fields. We saw it again last week in the Doncaster, the outside gates in the finish. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's found the two you've mentioned, Lighthouse and Ice Bath. They'll both run well here on the backup from the Doncaster. Uh, and both backable odds. Uh, promised a success. We'll need a duck and a weaving ride, but and is an inside gate, so less inclined, but is going well. Goes in next. And I really wanted to find Yonce because I'm sick of everything else here. But Gate 1 was a massive... Uh, if it wins from Gate 1, this is a serious horse, is what I'll say. And it'll probably take a serious yeah, ride. Look, that's right. It'll take a serious ride, serious horse. It's got to handle the track. Look, I'm, I can pop Ice Bath. Um, it just doesn't yep, win often yep. enough. It's won four from 30. I know it's won $4 million. It's won four races. Um, yeah, Especially like, at, uh, especially when light, Lighthouse is be three... Lighthouse is nearly three times the price too, which is the big key. Yeah, that's right. I just yeah. it, it's just super hard to find um, ice bath, and it could well win, but it won't be winning with my money at five dollars for a horse yeah. that's won four from thirty in a race quality race. I know it ran well in the Doncaster last start, but um, again, that might have been the, the one good start that it has does have this prep. I think it needs. I think this needs to be six dollars a field, uh, but it yeah. may well be on the day. We finished up race 10 with the Sapphire Stakes over the 1,200 metres where I was going to finish the day with, well, emanate off a win. It was a good win. It was uh, on a condition suited, bolted in, backs up here, does, uh, well, keeps Stam Clipperton. But uh, happy to finish the day with it in a team, uh, well, a team of horses I'm not overly uh, that enthralled with anymore. It'll run well. Bellucci will run well, and you got Bjorn the last, and Jump the Broom still unbeaten, and so we don't know just how good it is. So, interesting to see it. It does draw the right gate for this time of the day, and uh, and has Willie Pike. How are you finishing today? Yeah, same. I think m is going to be super hard to beat. It's, uh, hit its peak last start. was a good win. Uh, I can see exactly the same pattern and plan um, go to plan as as last start. So uh, this isn't an overly difficult field for it to take care of and uh, emanate for me in the last. Outstanding. For progroupracing.com.au, day two of the championships, Beaver, can I get your best and value? And I'll do the quaddy after that. My value bet is in race 10, number eight, emanate. I think it's good value. And my best bet of the day comes up in race two, Number nine, Lock Eagle. 
Very good. Uh, I'll make my best. Ooh, very tricky day for a best bet. Uh, I'll make... Um, uh, let's jump in. Let's make Crystal Pegasus my best. And value... I do like Emanate, but I'll make Lighthouse my value in the Queen of the Turf as well. The Randwick Quaddy. I'll go first leg. Four Stockman, five Crystal Pegasus. Eight No Compromise, 11 Surefire, 13 Chalk Stream, 16 Dadoos That, who's 80s. Race eight, two Zaki, three Arm Thunderstruck, six Very Elegant, seven Duas, eight Montefilia, nine Animo. Race nine, one Colette, two Lighthouse, three Ice Bath, seven Promise to Success. 14 yonts, and we'll come home with three Minhaj, four Baluchi Babe, eight Emanate, 11 Jump the Broom, and I'll well, throw two Bella Nipotina in there as well to sum up Championship Day. And we head down south to Caulfield where we get a good and true track, which is a nice change. Uh, it's not necessarily the most exciting Caulfield meeting we've ever seen, Beaver, but um, they're racing, so we probably should have a bet, in all fairness. Kicks off with the... Well, we know we get at Caulfield on a good track. Kicks off with the Benchmark 100 over the 2400, where, well, there's two chances here. I think they'll jiggy jog up front and fight out the finish. So I speak of Maserati Bay and Desert Icon. Uh, they look pretty obvious with a complete lack of pace behind them. And... Uh, I'll just go five from two for the record. How are you starting off the day down south? Yeah, that could be right. Um, I'm potting Desert Icons, so I've, I've come down to two. Uh, I think it'll be forward out between Maserati Bay and I think the main chase is Steel Prince. Um, cool. No, nothing else, Dad? No, nothing else, Dad. All right, race two is a 2,000 metre benchmark 84. Uh, you were all over deep strike last time at Sandown. You're sticking. Look, I think it's certainly one of the, one of the main dangers and the biggest chances. I think it was um, it was all set up for its uh, last start. I'm going to I'm just going to switch here. I, I got it down to two. I'm going to go for Commander Harry. I uh, really like the way I, I like it third up here. I thought it was a really good run last start at Mornington. Uh, came home. It wouldn't have wouldn't have had to go much longer for it to win the race at Mornington. Um, and last preparation, it ran well in. Um, the, behind Hitotsu in the in the Derby, I think it was, or the Oaks. Um, no, Derby, wasn't it? Um, and then prior to that, was close up behind Forgot You. So last preparation was pretty good. Uh, stepping up now to the 2000, I think it'll suit. It can run really well. Commander Harry on top for me. I've gone Agnelli on top. It had to chase the whole race behind its stable mate at Mornington. Last start, I think it gets control of this race uh, and for, well, assume from gate one, punch through uh, and get control and give you nice sight at an each way price all the way around from Deep Strike, who had the big breakthrough and does look obvious coming here. Uh, Command Harry would be the other on pace uh, danger there. Race three over the mile is a benchmark 78 which is a little bit trickier, but I'm going with uh, Black Comb, the mayor of a, a nice resumption at Pakenham. Gets, draws a gate to do similar to the thing to it did last time. Was doing some good stuff early last prep and then went out on an Oaks path and uh, didn't quite run the trip. So I'm thinking it's been a bit freshened up here. Might be trained differently and we'll give you a sight at the mile from perhaps the obvious, which might be Welsh Legend set down here from some decent stuff in Sydney the last few years. Uh, I assume looking for a dry track and um, does fit in well in this race, I think. But uh, they're the two for me, Beaver. Yeah, look, um, you could be right there. I've stuck with Black Cone as well. Uh, liked the way it won first up. Had some decent form last preparation before it tapered out. Uh, freshened up here. O'Brien flying uh, could get the right run here. And maybe the main danger, the hard fit oceans, Jen, but black came on top for me. Beautiful. Uh, the listed group, uh, listed two year old race, the Reduce Choice, over 1100 metres for the, uh, comes up next, as I spit that out this time of the morning. Uh, what are you doing here, Beaver? Any idea in with all of these unraced ones? 
Yeah, look, a tricky race here, but I've still got on Cannonball uh, from the Friedman stable. Uh, sent for a kill last start and uh, did just that. Uh, it was a really, really, really good win at Geelong. Um, started a short price favourite, uh, but uh, led and put him away pretty comfortably there. Um, I think he can run really well here and uh, without too much knowledge around the unraced, can run well. Yeah, no confidence at all with the unraced, so put in a copy for me. Uh, I had it on top as well, so I won't repeat that. Uh, race five is the 1100 metre benchmark 70, where I, I like the return of Sense of Honour off a year and a half off, uh, if not a bit more. And I think the step up in distance, a run under its belt is going to suit here. And I don't think, well, it's still only a benchmark 70, uh, benchmark 70. And I think this is still a better horse than that. And I think she'll run well here. Uh, sense of Honour for me, Beaver. Yeah, I, I settled on the same. Thought exactly the same as you. Um, I think uh, that run will do the world of good. And I think the five gate's perfect here. I think it'll um, be further improved. And uh, this is very winnable race. So uh, like Sense of Honour around the $6 mark. Fantastic. Uh, 1,100 metre for the three-year-olds comes up next, where I'm keen on the chances here of Scissor Step. It went out just missing behind Generation last time as a couple of trials leading into this is drawn out, but we'll go forward and find a blending run, I believe, and we'll give you a sight. Sarah Des is a good horse uh, who will do similar, and there was one down the bottom I was going to make a case for, but I've just lost my notes. Uh, no, they're the main two for me, but uh, one of the others wouldn't surprise, uh, my new numero uno wouldn't surprise either, but a tricky little race for the three-year-olds beaver. What have you done here? I've settled on uh, the fresh New York baby, um, I think it can run really well. Um, it was pretty good last preparation. Uh, has won two from two first up, uh, which is a good pointer for me. Likes his distance and ran really well in some listed company and group races last start. So I think that sets up well for it to run well first up. Well, uh, the 1,400 metres for the, is the Phillies race up next. Uh, well, Belle Savoie beat a lot of these key rivals last start, uh, including uh, Adela Moore, who we fancied at the time. It was pretty impressive hitting the line there. Blake McDougal sticks, and I think can repeat the dose. Will be very hard to beat. What have you done? Same, same. I think it's going to be super hard to beat here. Uh, continues to improve. It's only had the two from two, and it beat Marine, who ran well midweek. Um, so I think uh, good form lines for this and uh, drawn well, hard to beat. Race eight is the mile benchmark 84. What are you doing here? Yeah, look, this is a tricky race, isn't it? Um, the favourite, Poissier, only had the one start last prep and uh, something went wrong and they put it out. Um, they bring it back here. Uh, Hickmont uh, gets these horses up first up to run really well. Uh, it's got the two kilo claim. I think it's got to be, you've got to have it on top. Um, just not sure. Sure about Zara, Zara type. Um, it's first up here. Uh, it's had some form in restricted grade company, uh, but geez, it's only missed the place once. Um, so really hard to get a gauge on its form line against uh, probably better quality horse here. I'm willing to take it on. And probably the other main danger is the other Hickmont horse, Bill Toro. Uh, didn't have a lot of luck last start. Was kept caught pretty wide the whole way and had to do a lot of work. Uh, I think it can run better here, freshened up. Tricky race. I ended up, I've got, I put Zara tight on top, actually. I think it's come over here. Did some nice stuff, albeit over a little bit further there. Two trials for this have been good. And a lot, there's been a little bit of a tail in this race. My concern in the race is the pace, which might play into Hosier's hands. Uh, there's not a lot going forward here and Hosier will, uh, especially with the claim on, will go forward so that does scare me. Uh, ain't no deal done. It was a nice res an okay resumption. Caught it up uh, behind Kiss, Kiss and All for Cheeks off a long break and is a talent horse and will run well as well, but I haven't told you anything. The market hasn't. The one that stands out that's over the odds at the moment, nearly four, nearly 50s, is accountability. It might be a forgotten horse, but um Zara type from Hosier for me. We wrap up the day over the 1400 metres with a benchmark 78. Yeah, how are you going to finish yourself? Yeah, Mike, uh, I'm going to go for the favourite old flame here. Uh, it was a great win first up. 
uh, since coming from overseas, had a couple of trials up in Sydney, taken down, Snowden then took it down to Melbourne, uh, won really, really well there, uh, was well fancied, finished off nicely over the 1400, sticks to 1400, but drawn to get the right run in the race, track in, uh, super hard to beat. Yep, copy and paste for me, uh, agree. Uh, the danger I will make, uh, well, as again, as the market says, paper boy hard to beat, and that's pretty much all I want to say about the race, really. Uh, there's a few others that will run. Well, Abel Willie, I actually considered giving another chance to, but I might keep it in the dead to me column for now. I remember when Kanane was going to win a Cox Plate. How good was that? I just noticed it popping up in this race. But anyway, um, let's get your quaddy and then best bets for Caulfield. Yeah, I'll do my best bets first. My best bet in Caulfield is race nine, number seven, Old Flame. And my value bet is race six, number four, New York Baby. Excellent. I'll make my best, uh, where are we here? I'll make a Bell Savar, race seven, number three. And my value on the card can be, uh, let me think about this. Uh, no, no, I don't need to think about it at all. It's uh, race five, number five, Sense of Honor. Quaddy time. Quaddy time. Uh, first leg. We will have number one, my numero uno, number three, Scissor Step, number four, New York Baby, and number nine, Righty Old Pal. In the second leg, we're going to go number three, Belle Savoir, number four, Ar Arctica, number nine, Botan Botany, and number two, Maricana. In the third leg, we're going number three, Zaratite, number five, Bissier, number six, Ain't No Done Deal, number 10, Bel Tioro. And in the last leg, we're going number two, Macram, number seven, Old Flame, number nine, B Hunter, number 11, Paperboy. Very good, Beaver. Uh, before we get to Queensland, where you're heading, uh, the a couple of more I'll just throw out here. Race three, number one, Elite Icon will be very hard to beat. And race seven, number two, Mac and Cheese, flying this prep. And oh, I love the Mac and Cheese. Might be hard to Not beat. Not a bad feed and a very good horse as well. Well, if you're really feeling especially hungry, double it up with race six, number four, Pudding. But... Um, We'll get to what do you got up up north in Queensland? Queensland, we've got race two, number nine, Night Mariner. Number three, race three, number nine, Natalie Ann. And then we move a little bit later in the day, where we we find number race seven, number twelve, Aidens Field. Mm. And then in the last, we've got race nine, number 10, Smart Image. Outstanding. Good job, Beaver. Uh, good good luck tomorrow, punters. Drive safe, mate. Get through the weather up there and uh, enjoy your break. I thought with everyone we'll along the coast doing it pretty tough in the weather again, stay safe. We hope it all starts to turn around pretty soon. Otherwise, good punting tomorrow, guys. We'll see you this time on Tuesday for our midweek preview. Catch you then. Catch you, Matt. See you, buddy. Catch you.